In this screencast, I'm going to demonstrate how to find the acceleration of an object on an inclined plane. I've chosen a penguin on an icy slope as my example, and the plane is inclined by theta above the horizontal. Let's assume no friction for the moment and determine the acceleration of the penguin. The solution to this problem is going to follow my standard recipe. Draw the forces acting on the penguin, use Newton's second law, and solve. So let's start with identifying the forces acting on the penguin. There's a gravitational force acting on the penguin that's straight down and equal to mg. There's also a normal force acting on the penguin. The normal force has to be perpendicular to the supporting surface. If there were a frictional force acting in this problem, it would be along the incline in this direction. But I'm going to assume no friction for this example. So that's it. There are just two forces acting on the penguin in this problem. Notice that the forces are not parallel, so I'm going to want to set up axes and develop two equations, one along each set of axes. The next natural question to ask is, what should these axes look like? It would be quite natural to take a guess and draw the axes like this. This is kind of the default option, right? But this penguin is going to accelerate in this direction along the incline. And with these axes, the acceleration will need to be resolved into components, and so will the normal force. If friction were added back in, it too would need to be resolved into components. It turns out that if the axes are chosen so that one axis is in the direction of the acceleration, it simplifies the calculations quite a bit. Notice that with these axes, the only force that will need to be resolved into components is mg. Because the calculations are simpler, I'm going to do the problem with these axes first, and after that, I'll actually do the calculation with the other set of axes I just showed you, so that you can see that the result is the same. I hope it will also convince you that choosing axes along the direction of acceleration is often the way to go. When I apply Newton's second law, f net equals ma, I'm going to have two equations, one in the x direction and one in the y direction. And to use these equations, mg will need to be resolved into components. Those components need to be parallel to the axes, which, by the way, means that the components will need to be perpendicular to each other. I'm going to need to know something about the angles in that triangle I just drew if I'm going to find components. Looking at this large triangle, this angle is 90 minus theta. That means that this angle is also 90 minus theta because it's an opposite interior angle. And that makes this angle up here equal to theta. And now I'm in a position to write down the components. Once everything is resolved into components, I'm set to apply Newton's second law. In the x direction, mg sine theta is equal to max. In the y direction, fn minus mg cosine theta is equal to may. Notice that with this choice of axes, the object's acceleration is going to be entirely along the x-axis. So there's no motion at all in the y direction, and the acceleration in the y direction has to be equal to zero. Making that substitution and rearranging, fn is equal to mg cosine theta. In the x direction, there's an m on both sides of the equation, so I'll get rid of them. So ax is equal to g sine theta. One of the things I like to do when I arrive at a result like this one is to think of some extreme points to see if my answer makes any sense. For example, let's think about what happens when theta is equal to zero. Well, then the penguin will just be sitting on a horizontal surface. And ax will be equal to g sine zero, and since sine zero is equal to zero, ax is equal to zero. Also, fn will be equal to mg cosine zero, and since cosine zero is one, fn is equal to mg. And it seems pretty reasonable that if the penguin is sitting on a horizontal surface, its acceleration would be zero, and the normal force would be equal to mg. We could also look at what happens if theta is equal to 90 degrees. Then the penguin is going to be slipping down a perfectly vertical surface. In that case, ax is going to be equal to g sine 90, which is equal to g, and fn is going to be equal to mg cosine 90, which is equal to zero. You might ask, why does the falling penguin have positive acceleration? I mean, don't we usually say that acceleration in free fall is negative 9.8 meters per second squared? The answer goes back to the way I chose my axes. Notice how the positive x-axis is down the incline. When the angle goes to 90 degrees, straight down is actually positive, and that's why the acceleration is positive 9.8 meters per second squared in this case. That's pretty much all I have to say about the inclined plane, but I did promise you that I would show you how to do this same calculation if the axes looked like this. In this case, there's no need to have components drawn for mg, but I will need components for acceleration and for the normal force. Let me mark the angle theta here and here, and I'll also go ahead and label the components for each of these vectors. 
Once again, I'm going to have two equations, one in the x direction and one in the y direction. In the x direction, fn sine theta is equal to ma cosine theta. In the y direction, fn cosine theta minus mg is equal to negative ma sine theta. I'm going to go ahead and solve the x equation for fn. So fn is equal to ma cosine theta over sine theta. And then I'm going to make a substitution into the y equation. Then I'm going to multiply through by sine theta to clear it out of the denominator. And I'm going to collect the cosine squared theta and sine squared theta terms on the left-hand side of the equation. Remember that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, so I can get rid of it. And there's an m on both sides, so I'll cancel those as well. And all of a sudden, I am left with the pretty simple equation, a is equal to g sine theta. Notice that this is exactly the same result that I arrived at earlier. Also, substituting a into the equation for fn results in fn equals mg cosine theta. Again, the same result that I arrived at with the other set of axes. So, as promised, the calculation is more involved with this set of axes, but it's still doable and leads to exactly the same result. I'll just end by saying that most of the time you'll find that it makes sense to orient your axes so that one of the axes points in the direction of acceleration. The vast majority of the time, this will be your intuition anyway. But there are some problems that involve circular motion where it's not so intuitive. And when you get to those, just remember that you want to point one of your axes in the direction of the acceleration.